This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh. So, what we're going to do now is to... I'm going to just work through an example and then we're going to look at the results because one of the key things about complex Fourier series is that these coefficients are complex and we have to interpret what the magnitude and phase means. So there is summary side 9, which the final, the final side of the old handout. Basically, uh, the additional diagram I haven't shown you is, is this block diagram model for the Fourier complex Fourier series. And it's basically saying if you want to represent the signal x of t, you can take the infinite summation of complex phases of frequency omega naught, two omega naught, three omega naught, and so on. And in fact, you would actually have minus omega naught, minus two omega naught. And you multiply those by your Fourier coefficients, and you add them all together. It's quite good to remind yourself that this is a, a signal decomposition. So let's move on to summary slide 10. So we've got a signal, which is quite a common signal you'll come across, a rectangular pulse. And the period of that waveform is capital T. So you can see that. And the signal is zero everywhere within that period, except for between minus tau on two and plus tau on two. So the pulse width is tau. So we had a long conversation yesterday about how you write down that signal. And I'm going to, I'm going to do that here. So you'll be able to write it in the side here. I'll write it a bit bigger. But if you wanted to fully describe that signal by an equation, you would do it as follows. x of t is a, has a value a if the magnitude of t is less than tau over 2. So that means, if you think about it, that, that is equivalent to t being between minus tau on 2 to plus tau on 2. It is 0 if uh, the magnitude of t is be between tau on 2 and plus t on 2, where t is a period. So that's actually just, just described a waveform within one period. But we need a third equation to describe it for, for all time. So I'm going to write that, since the period is t, x of t is equal to x of t minus mt for any value of m where m is an integer. And I use z to denote the set of all integers. Okay, so that would fully describe the signal. So obviously, it's much easier to draw the picture. And the picture fully describes the signal as well. But if you had to write it down mathematically, that's how you'd do it. So you want to get used to fully characterizing it precisely and mathematically like that. So if we want to work out what the Fourier coefficients are, that's quite easy. We need to pick a period of a waveform. So we had a long conversation yesterday about what an idea might be. You could choose between 0 to capital T. That's fine. You'll have to do three integrals in that case. Well, t two integrals and one trivial one. If you went from integral from 0 to capital T, you'd have to integrate uh, x of t between 0 and tau on 2, where the value would be a. You'd have to integrate from tau on 2 to t minus tau on 2, because this point here, have a sort of think about it, is t minus tau on 2. And the value of a signal at that point is 0, so the integral is 0. And then you'd have to integrate from t minus tau on 2 to t, where it's value of a again. And by this point, you probably lost the will to live. So you should instantly recognize that you should integrate from minus capital T on 2 to plus capital T on 2. Because there are still three integrals, but two of them now trivial because they're zero. So here's, here's just the expression for the um, Fourier, complex Fourier series. And there's only one non-trivial. Now, when I say trivial, I don't mean as in, I actually mean sort of mathematically trivial, it's just zero. Um, but there really should be two further integrals. The integral from minus t on 2 to minus tau on 2. But of course, the signal is zero. And from tau on 2 to t on 2, where the signal is also 0. Now, you might sort of go, well, yeah, but this is all pointless because it's just 0. I know it's 0. 
But let's say that I wanted to analyze that signal and I just shifted the signal with a DC offset by a value of 1. Then those two second integrals are actually now a little bit more involved. So I think it's well worth thinking about what the trivial integrals are because it will make it clear in your head what the procedure is. So now, I've constantly said, well, I said in the first lecture of this course, the most difficult mathematics that you need to learn is how to integrate, differentiate, and exponential. And it's amazing how often that can go wrong. <laughs> so you want to practice this. Yeah, just on, uh, just a, sorry, sorry, just a aside. I know I keep getting distracted. As an aside, yesterday we did um, the power formula, and I had a limit as w goes to infinity. And just so you know, in this course, we don't do any complicated limits. You don't have to do the Hoptow's or all the limits you'll ever come across are ones which I'd call trivial. It's just obvious what the limit is. In practice, um, signal analysis does require all of that maths, but we just don't get you to do it because it's quite a short course. D two things. One is, when I work through stuff like this, try and work through it with me. The second thing is, this is going to sound like tennis. When I give lectures, I will make either an unforced error or deliberate error. So the unforced error is because I, don't, I didn't have enough sleep last night or too much beer and I'm just not thinking, uh, which is the primary reason for making mistakes. It's just you just drifted off and lost concentration. And I might make a deliberate error and that's just to see if you're awake. And of course, you don't know which one I'm doing. <laughs> So therefore, you have to check everything I'm doing and ask questions if you spot something that doesn't seem correct. <coughs> Hopefully, your, your notes are a little bit neater than mine. So that's the first stage. Uh, you're integrating with respect to T. So uh, take the J n omega naught out. Okay, so we get something like that. So, yeah. Yeah. Right, no, not half a period. You need to keep uh, track of what my capital T's are and what my tau's are. So that's a minus tau on 2 to plus tau on 2 because that's, remember, the other two integrals are 0. Yeah. So you always want to be looking out for, you could leave it like that, and in fact, we always have this problem when setting... Uh, exam questions like, if I say work out the Fourier series coefficients, can you stop there? Well, probably. You probably could stop there, but we'll see later on that that's not the bit most useful form. Go on. Excellent. Uh, because that was either an unforced error or a deliberate error. <laughs> well spotted. You could, what you want to sort of quickly spot is that that's a sign. Uh, the bit in the brackets is a sign. So if I take the minus, if I multiply top and bottom by 2 and take minus 2j in, um, then the next stage would be this. <coughs> okay, now that might become a little bit illegible. Uh, but we'll spot that that is a sign. So I'll come out to the bottom of the page here. Now, we're going to look for some further... Simplifications. So, so you can anyone spot anything we might be able to do? Minus. Now I took the minus in and rearranged the order of those exponentials. So when I went from uh, this stage to this stage, uh, I rearranged the order of those exponentials. I love live examples. It kind of gets the adrenaline up. You wonder, is this, am I going to get this right? Now, you could leave it at that form. Now, this is the Fourier, the nth Fourier coefficient, x of n. So you could leave it like that. But we're going to have to develop uh, a function, which you ha have likely seen before. So what I'm noticing is I've got an n inside the sign and an n in the bottom. So I can straightaway see that what happens when n equals to 0 when n equals to 0, I've got sine of 0 over 0. So the question is, do I have a problem there or not? Good question. But really, x of n is a function of n, because the frequency omega naught, which happens to uh, equal 2 pi over capital T, so I might uh, replace that in a moment, that's fixed. 
tau is fixed and the amplitude A is fixed. The thing that's variable is n, so can I write that in a different way? So in order to do that, um, I'm going to do a little bit of rearrangement. I'm going to multiply the top and bottom. Sorry, when I tell you I'm going to do this, you might be sitting there going, why? Why are you going to do that? And uh, I suppose at this point I'm just kind of telling you. Um, but at some point I try and help you develop some intuition about how you do these rearrangements. So just remember, you know, a lot of this theory here has been developed over you know, many, many years by many, many people. And if you just did a scattergun approach, you know, sort of monkeys on typewriters, someone somewhere got it right and everyone else went, oh, great, okay, that's the obvious way of doing it. And so I tell you this is the obvious way of doing it. Okay, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by tau divided by 2. And so these twos cancel there. And what I spot is, um, I've got, if I write this as a tau over t, sine n omega naught tau over 2, over n omega naught tau over 2. And this function uh, in the brackets is basically an example of a function which is called the sink function. And I'm going to define sink of a function value theta as sine of theta divided by theta. So have you come across the sink function before in maths? Some nods. Now, is that, is that a no or isn't a shake of a head, or is that a... So you haven't seen this before, is what I'm trying to find out. No, okay. So this sink theta over theta is a function that I'm going to develop because it's quite crucial to the rest of it and um, is a highly... Is, is something you need to know. If I told you you needed to know it for an exam, then I think you'll all sort of perk up here. But... Uh, you probably do. So let's have a look at this um, sink theta over theta. So um, obviously this function here it becomes a tau over t sink of n omega naught tau over 2. Maybe just one final step before I move on. I notice that I've got a tau, a t, and I've still got omega naught in there. Can anyone give me an expression for omega naught? Yeah, so omega naught is 2 pi over capital T, so I think I'll just replace that uh, in there as well. So I think the final expression we're going to look at is um, A tau over capital T, sink of um, N pi tau over T, where the two is cancelled when I substituted that in. So that's the final, and that should have been sink. That's the final expression we're going to sort of deal with. So yeah, what does this sync function look like? This production is copyright, the University of Edinburgh.